Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all doing super duper swell. I got quite a bit of the trim painted this week, which of course is a huge plus. It's uh, definitely one of the taller tasks, believe it or not. The uh, two day minimum dry time per coat, everything needing about three coats, plus a primer coat, which also takes two days to dry. Um, it uh, e eats days like you wouldn't imagine. But we are getting uh, a bit closer, but of course it's also a lot easier to paint things down here on the ground than it is up in the sky. So especially when we get above the cornice or at the very, very top of the tower, it's of course much easier to paint it all down here. So that's what I'm working towards at the moment. But of course, just watching literal paint dry isn't much of a video, but it is the task that I dealt with most this week. On top of another extremely pressing issue that I uh, handled somewhat this week, but we'll probably finish next but we'll get into that later so because this isn't the most let's say interesting or groundbreaking topic i've decided to turn this video into more of a q a you guys have recently asked a ton of questions um so i really want to get to a lot of those for you guys and clear up some misconceptions or uh plans that i have for problems that i have so let me show you how some of the trim is coming along and then i'll get into some frequently asked questions it should be fun. It'll be a lot of things that I haven't discussed in a long time, rooms you guys haven't seen in a long time. So stick around and you can maybe figure out a bit more about this whole big plan that I have. So let's get into it. Starting off down here, we have some of the beautiful soffit boards that are starting to look quite nice. Uh, these being the underside of the gutter box up on the Mansa roof. Uh, they're looking pretty nice, but of course these are only on the top coat. I haven't done anything with the bottom, but I did get both the sides. Uh, and these being the front facing boards. These ones are quite a bit easier to get drying because I can set them upright like this and have more room to work on other projects like, such as these giant boards here. Here we are on the second floor in the library, a room you guys haven't seen in uh, quite some time. And here's some of the trim I've got going up here. This is gonna be a lot of that stuff. It's gonna be obviously the, the a lot of the smaller details. Uh, this is actually that little fiddly piece I talked about last week that a lot of the Manson roof is missing. We have two different sizes of this profile. Not exactly sure where the small ones go. I know where these go. These go around all the corbels and everything at the very top. There's a very, very small bit of this already painted up there, but a lot of this trim up on the Manson is really hard to strip where it's at. These have one coat on them. These are just primed. That's why they're quite dark. Then on to these Mondo pieces. These go at the very top of the cornice. They wrap around the whole building and are absolutely gorgeous. So you can see they're big, they're brown, and they're more or less ready to be installed. Probably one more coat on these. Fun fact with these, because these are such dense wood, these are sapili. They weigh about 65 pounds each. They are uh, quite dense, quite heavy. And uh, there's just a lot of lumber here, as you can see from the back, they are solid. Such a shame kind of to, it's quite a shame to really paint such a beautiful wood as Sapili, but of course that's what they would have done back in the day. Not that they would have used Sapili, but uh, this is kind of the rot resistant lumber that was around at the time Eric was manufacturing these, so that's what they are. So that more or less is a lot of the trim that I've gotten done. There's more of it. There's a lot of it scattered everywhere. Um, I mean, more or less, the second floor is all just trim, ready to go to the pantsed roof, uh, laid out on various tables and, and different things, whatever surface I can really put them on to get them painted. Um, so lots of sawhorses in use and lots of 12 foot long pieces of trim just laid out with uh, in various states of paint. So let's move on to some questions, which will be a much more fun part of the video, I promise. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's start up here, shall we? The very, very destroyed third floor of my house. This brick wall or half wall that you see around here is actually what the mansard roof sits on. So everything below this is that cornice that I've been working on painting on the outside. Everything above it is the, everything above it is the slanted mansard roof. As you can see, these walls are angled in. This is actually the tower here. And this is that lovely missing dormer. Now this room is a mess for multiple reasons. First one being all the tarps that I've had to have in here. One of the major questions I've been getting is, does this leak? And yeah, what you're seeing there is pure skylight. Of course it leaks, but I haven't left it completely open. 
I've had multiple tarps. Uh, this is one of probably, oh, I don't know, eight or nine that I've had up here that have been completely shredded and destroyed. That's what that ratchet strap on the top of the roof is doing up there. It was to hold down to stop the wind from ripping these things apart. And after the pediment fell, which is the sunburst pattern that used to be up here in the front, when that fell, the rest of the structure of the dormer didn't really have much support. And actually the tarp is what destroyed the roof section of the dormer, so the top upper section, and actually crushed it down and it fell into this opening and some of it fell in the gutter. And that's what would explain this mess. This is actually a lot of the top of that dormer, including a lot of the slate and various things like that. Yes, absolute disaster, but uh, we're getting to the point of being able to correct this again. Now the reason I've been filming this without a tarp on it is because luckily for the last two and a half, three weeks, we haven't really gotten much rain. This piece of plastic here, or what's left of it, was probably from about, oh, I don't know, two and a half weeks ago when we got a little bit of rain. Uh, basically every time it would rain, I would go back up here and staple something back up because it was just getting way too expensive to buy the size of tarp that I would need to drape over this. And most likely, now I can't 100% guarantee this, but most likely we'll be building part of the dormer next week. Basically just the structural part, there won't be any pretty probably going on next week, but structure enough to keep most of the weather out. Am I still going to have problems here until I have everything flashed, reslated, sealed? Yeah, of course we're going to. Um, but everything right now is definitely in triage state and it has been since I've owned the place. Um, obviously the hole wasn't this big when I got the place, but you know, it's one of those things you do what you can, when you can, when you have the money, when you have the time, uh, all of that. And uh, while I, I would love this to have been the first project I did on the house, it just isn't conceivable. Understand, just the mansard roof here, just this part of the house, not including anything, any water, any electrical, any systems, just this is probably around a $60,000 project with me doing almost all of the work. Mostly because it requires materials that are extremely expensive, like slate, like copper, like rot resistant hardwoods. Materials are expensive, custom work is expensive. Uh, I'll, be, I'll, but I will say, Eric has uh, given me quite a deal on this whole process. Um, I imagine if I had any other company come out, it would be $100,000 in just woodwork, so. Another thing with why I didn't do this first, because you have to wait for the people who know how to do this stuff to come out and be able to do it. You know, men's roofs are a pretty specialty trade. There's not a lot of people who can really do them anymore. There's a reason why my neighbor's house, that beautiful mansard roof has vinyl siding on it because that's what most people, or most people who get to your problem quickly are gonna wanna do. They're gonna wanna take off the original elements and do things that they can understand material wise and put them up here. So waiting for the experts to come out here and do this thing, it's a long waiting process, uh, but it'll be very, very worth it, of course, once we get the stuff up. This is the window for the smaller dormer in the room next to where we just were. As you can see, that little bit of light right up at the top, just above the window frame. Yeah, that's uh, open. And as you can see, yes, of course, there's water getting here. Obviously not as much as the other side, but we do what we can to mitigate what we can when we can. Luckily, I will say that the people who built this originally did build it out of some really solid lumber and we have found almost zero, emphasis on the almost, but almost zero. Uh, rot in any of this lumber. It's actually really solid. I mean, just on the other side of this is the slate. So it's this wood here. This is the decking of the mansard roof. There's a little piece of felt underneath that. And then on the other side of that is the actual slate. So this is actually what's nailed into. Like this is a nail for one of the pieces of slate that's sticking out right here. So that is the mansard roof. And luckily structurally, the mansard roof is actually in pretty good condition. Obviously on the exterior, the exterior facing wood is quite severely destroyed and broken and beat up. But of course that's a lot easier to fix than fixing the actual structure. So luckily up here, we're in a really good state. The structure of the place is in really good condition. Another one of the questions I've been asked is will the house have shutters on it? The answer is absolutely yes, the house will have shutters. But what type of shutters will depend on where it is. So let's start here. We're on the second floor in the large master bedroom up here. For those who don't remember this room, it's the room with all the really pretty plaster work and trim. 
just right off the main staircase. This is in that big front bay on the second floor. If you look out the window, you can see my lift right there <laughs> through these very, very dirty windows. And in this area, you can actually see that there were never shutters on the exterior of the building here. There were in other areas, but not here. And that's because they had internal shutters. You can see right here, some of the old hinge patterns for where the shutters used to be. There's another one up here. These weren't as fancy as they are in the parlor, obviously, but because these ones don't fold in to anything, they would just kind of hang out in this space right here, which is of course fine, but everything in the fancier rooms, which is this room here, and yes, trim, trim everywhere. In this room here, both had interior shutters, not exterior. Even on the large Jefferson window here, that was true. What do I mean by Jefferson window? As you can see, the window drops all the way to the floor. This would open out and this is that balcony that doesn't exist any longer, uh, but will be replaced with, of course, a new balcony. But you can see even there, there's the old hinge patterns for the old shutters, along with more staples that uh, I don't know I'll ever see the end of in the interior of this place. So here at the back of the house, this is in the library where we just were with Again, all the trim. If we go here, you can see there's no real width to the window on the inside. There's no extra place for a shutter to go, nor is there any hinge pattern or any kind of marks left that would have told you that there was a hinge here at one point, because there wasn't. Where the hinge pattern actually is, is here on the outside, because these ones all had exterior shutters. You can see right here, right here then as you go further up there are more hinge patterns like right there so that's two of the types of the shutters that were here on the house let me go to the parlor and i will show you the last type which is by far the best type and the only type of shutter that still exists here on the house plus it's a good excuse to go show you guys what's going on in the parlor which to be fair isn't much i haven't really done anything to it but it's still one of the most beautiful rooms in the house, if not the most beautiful room in the house. So let's go have a look. It's been a minute. To the last type of shutters, here we are in the absolutely gorgeous front parlor. This of course is the first floor and probably the room that made me have to buy this house. Because even though these are actually modern windows, they left the shutters intact. Now you can see here, this little pocket looks like a piece of paneling around the window, which of course is pretty gorgeous, but actually it folds out from this little pocket in here. And there you go, you have your shutter. Now, of course, the ones on the upper floors are not as, let's say, beautiful as these ones. They don't have the little pocket to fold into, but they will be designed pretty much in the same way with the louvers that are movable, so you can control the amount of light in here. So everything minus the pocket will be the shutters that end up going in the two fancier rooms above us here. So yes, I want to explain the shutters in the house, but more or less it was a good excuse to go show you guys some rooms you guys haven't seen in a while. Plus, you know, who, who can get sick of looking at this place? <laughs> and a good reminder to you all and maybe some new viewers of uh, really why I'm trying to save this place. Just one of those things, you don't find very many homes that are this intact as this place is. And then I even still have all the original plaster up here. You know, it's just an amazing place and, uh, and it's certainly worth fighting for. Even if it takes me a lifetime, I think it's well worth it, so. So one last little question is why did I paint all the trim up on the mansard roof while it was up on the mansard and why didn't I take it all down? More or less, why did that take precedent over fixing the dormers and the other structural issues that are up there currently? And the major reason for that is I've been waiting for Eric to show up and work his magic. Now, of course, currently he's working on things. He's actually building the sunburst pattern for the dormer. And I've seen a little bit of the progress and it's already starting to look pretty good. But of course, the weather is coming and I have to get some kind of weatherproofing up there. So anything that I exposed and I took the paint off of, which again does help this process, needed some type of coating. There is also the fact that this is a YouTube channel. And without some kind of results, without some kind of beautification, without some kind of progress, things don't get viewed as much. 
And of course, with less views means less income coming in, which means less progress. So of course, it's in my best interest to keep you guys supplied with content that looks pretty. Of course, there are weeks like this week where things like painting take precedent and they're not the most exciting things to watch in the world. But of course they are extremely necessary and will make a huge difference when we go to assemble this. The other part of that question is, why didn't I just bring everything down? Take the whole mansard roof apart, do it on the ground, paint it like I'm painting these boards that are gonna go up and then reassemble it. And the main reason for that is context on all of this stuff is really, really, really important. If I took it apart and Eric, the guy who's going to be reassembling most of it, didn't get a good look at it, didn't understand it fully, and everything was now on the ground, it makes it a lot, lot, lot harder to figure out just how the jigsaw puzzle goes back together. And even though he's worked on many, many a mansard roof, nothing is ever exactly the same on these homes. He always had different craftsmen working on these houses, and no two craftsmen really work the same, at least not totally. So it's important to leave things the way they were, the best I can. That way, when we do start work on that section, everything is there and laid out. That way any adjusting or anything we have to do while we're up there can be done more on the fly. But you would be right, it would be a lot easier to take everything down, clean it all up down here, and then reassemble it back up there. But if I were to do that now, without somebody building out the roadmap with exactly how things go together, uh, it could be a big disaster really quickly. Because um, right now, I would say 90% of the wood that's up there is the original lumber. And therefore it was built and put together and assembled still in its original state, which is really, really, really important if you want to get it right. And of course I fall into the camp of really, 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 really wanting to get it right. So that's this week's video guys. I know it's not a conventional or normal video, but I did get to show you guys some really beautiful parts of the house that you guys haven't seen in a while. And progress continues like it does every week. And I do think if everything goes to plan, next week video should be a pretty exciting one because seeing new lumber going up on the mansard roof is a very, very exciting thing. And that's something that's going to be very, very possible for me to show you guys next week. Doesn't mean it happens again, but it's possible. And that's an exciting, <laughs> I can't stress how exciting that is to me. Also next week, I'll be handling a really severe tree problem. Uh, hopefully I'll be handling it. So fingers crossed that goes well. I have a family friend who is in the business of cutting trees or has been for a long time anyways. So him and my grandpa are gonna come up and hopefully we can make the tree situation happy. And as a byproduct of losing that branch, we also cut off one of the main access points for the squirrels to the mansard roof which is a double win in my book. <laughs> so the goal still remains at the end of the day to have a very, very different looking facade, at least mansard roof wise, by the end of the year. And I can't wait to bring you guys all that. So as always, thank you guys so much for being here and I'll catch you guys all next week. Until then, take care and bye-bye.